supplemental math videos from Circle Christian School. Square root property. Do the rooty tooty, plus and minus. Got a squared degree? You have two answers. Then you have to do the dance. Not sure what the dance is? Check it out in week 23 YouTube video at the ELC. Quadratic solving. Are you ready for the rooty tooty dance? Anyway, basically, the reason why you have a plus minus is because of the difference of two squares. Let's say we have a squared function, like u squared equals an answer, and d, we would just take it and have a minus. Now, I realize d is not a perfect square, but that doesn't mean you can't do the difference of two squares. So plus the square root of d and u minus the square root of d and when you set that all to zero, you would find that you get a positive square root d and a negative square root d. And that's kind of like the rooty tooty. Basically, you got something squared, you got a plus minus. One way to solve quadratic equations, that is any equation with a second degree, it's got a power of two in it, is by factoring. So you ask yourself, can you do the double bubble or factor by grouping? Uh, these we have done before. You can always go back to one of the other videos if you kind of have forgotten how to do the double bubble or factor by grouping. The second way to solve these is just to use the square root property. It's an inverse thing. If you got something that is squared, you're going to square root. If you got something that's square root, you're going to square. So we're just going to do the opposite of what we did in the last chapter. So we have 3x squared equals the 15. Um, going to do the same thing. Got to get the little x squared guy by himself. So we're going to divide both by 3. End up with an x squared equals 5. Now we're going to square root both sides. That little inverse, square root, square root. What you have to remember here is that it's not just the square root of 5, but it is plus minus the square root of 5. You got to do the Rudy Tootie dance. All right, if we can do it with a monomial, we of course can do it with a binomial. Um, no big deals there. You'll see we have a binomial squared, so I'm going to square root one side and I'm going to square root the other side. So he's going to come out. X minus 2 going to equal, remember it's a plus minus square root 10 and we're just going to take the 2 here and he's going to jump over the fence and land over here on the other side and anytime we jump the fence we change the sign so now I have a positive 2 plus minus square root 10 and you would end up with two values if you want to by taking your handy dandy calculator and going 2 plus the square root of 10 and 2 minus the square root of 10 just make sure you put the approximated decimal at least to the tenth place all right gonna work on the next one and we have to remember kingdom of pi steps number four isolate the condition and so we're gonna move the 8 to both sides here and that's going to leave us with the binomial squared equals the 8. And again, we're going to do the little rooty tooty dance. We're going to square root plus minus square root leaves us with a 3x minus 6 equals. Leave yourself a little space here because you know there's going to be a little bit of jumping. Plus minus the square root of 8. My bad. We all know that the square root of 8 equals 2 square root 2. Simplify as much as you can up front. Don't have to do it in the back. So now we're going to jump the 6. And so now he's a positive 6. And we have to divide everybody by a 3 now. See, the 6 is gone. So I'm going to divide by 3. 
Now here's the deal. Remember I told you I like real stuff up front and irrational stuff at the back? And it's the simplifying part that this really helps with. And so I'm going to divide everybody by a three. Remember it is united we stand divided by all. And six divided by the three gives us a two, a plus minus. We have a two over three, square root two. And that's what x equals. 